I've made kombucha before in the past, but never with my own SCOBY. I've always wanted to, but it's much easier just to buy one online. Recently, our family started drinking more store-bought kombucha, so I figured, why not just make one at home instead? SCOBYs are very peculiar things. The word itself is actually an acronym for symbiotic colony of bacterias and yeasts. Kefir grains are also SCOBYs. These things actually live and grow on sugar. Kefir grains thrive on the sugars in milk called lactose. When these SCOBYs ferment in sugary liquid, what results is acid, carbon dioxide, and alcohol. To make one of these SCOBYs, we are basically going to make sweet tea. From what I've seen, black tea and green tea produce the best end SCOBY result, but I wanted to experiment a little. I used black tea for one batch and then yerba mate for another. Mate is a pretty potent tea, so I wanted to say that it would do tons better. After making the sweet tea, I added raw kombucha, although you can use apple cider vinegar instead. Those will be our starter cultures to get the process moving along. I'm covering it with cheesecloth, then letting it ferment for a couple of weeks. What will happen is the bubbles start to create a thin film at the top that will eventually grow into a scoby. The mate batch started fermenting pretty fast, and there were way more bubbles than the black tea batch. But over time, the mate started to slow down while the black tea sped up. From what I learned, black tea just has way more fuel than other teas. That's why it does so well. The tea mixtures continue to smell more acidic and to bubble more until there is a visible scoby floating at the top. After a couple of weeks, it was clear that the mate batch just wasn't going to grow that much more. It was pretty sad given my guess at the beginning. Having said that though, I wasn't going to let it go to waste. After three weeks of fermenting, the black tea scoby was finished and it was time to try it out. Even holding these things are super weird. They are very squishy and have a very jellyfish-like texture. After showing some of my siblings what it looked like, I think they had second thoughts on drinking kombucha. I sure did when I first saw one. Before making the kombucha though, I wanted to try the leftover tea. What once was sweet is now extremely acidic and not very drinkable. It honestly tasted like vinegar. What was I expecting though? The mate tea was no exception, although it tasted a little bit better and a bit like lime. I heard that you can use this as a starter culture for more kombucha or use it as a cleaner. Anyways, to make the kombucha, we are following a very similar process for making the scoby. We are heating up some more water, steeping tea, and adding sugar. The tea that I'm using is called Evening in Missoula, and it was made locally. Believe it or not, it tastes and smells like root beer. Most people still use black tea for the first fermentation, but once again, I want to experiment. I'm using a container with a spout at the end for easy tasting and easy bottling. I also measured out two cups, which will be the measurement for the starter culture that I leave for the next batch. So with the sweet tea, I'm adding a little bit of the starter culture, filling it up with cold water, then adding the scobies. I decided to add both of the scobies and hope for them to fuse together instead of letting it go to waste. Following that we bottle, which is where the real fun begins. Another fermented drink checked off the list. 